So now in this video, we're going to look at the Zener diode. So it's a specially made diode. You actually use it reverse bias. You let current flow through it. Well, it is reverse bias. Reverse bias is the direction where it does not conduct easily. If I turn this around, it will probably build up about 0.7 volts uh, when it conducts. And um, so we use a reverse bias. When you use a reverse bias, the Zener diode has a Zener voltage. And that's going to be the voltage that builds up across it while current is flowing through it. And you can output that voltage. Now you can power like some really small loads at that uh, voltage, which is lower than the supply voltage. That's the uh, main thing. You want the supply voltage probably at least a couple volts higher. But um, really, you can't uh, provide a ton of current at 7 volts. We're probably only going to get, since this is almost 6 volts there, about 1 milliamp of current going through the Zener diode. And um, so if you draw more, you know, you can't get more current than that, I should say. Um, but in any case, um, even if you draw some of that current, you may throw it off. Now at 12 volts, we're going to have, you know, closer to 6 milliamps current going through here. And if you pull out like a, a few milliamps or something, you should be fine. It should still maintain about the Zener voltage. Now the Zener voltage does vary a tiny bit with how much current is flowing through it once current really starts flowing through it. Um, but it holds pretty steady, especially if you're in that five volt uh, range. Um, some of the lower value ones may drift uh, more or less, but uh, generally you stay pretty close to the Zener voltage. So here's the schematic. At the um, you know diode here, you got the bar on top and then the triangle right there. Um, this is again pointing uh, from negative to positive, which is the opposite way that you usually think of conventional current, uh, positive to negative. Um, so it's reverse bias. It's fighting the current flowing through it, like diodes do when they're reverse bias. But with any diode, if you get a high enough voltage, sooner or later it will conduct. This one you can safely do so a lot of diodes will be damaged if you force current to go through them reverse bias plus other circuitry that it is probably preventing current from going the wrong way but uh, any case usually you see on the schematic um it might say uh you know 5.6 volts but uh we took the uh, decimal point you know maybe hard to see the decimal point as you can see there and i uh, swap v where the decimal point goes uh 5.6 and again it comes in all uh, ranges of voltages. Uh, bipolar junction transistors tend to drop approximately 0.6 uh, volts from base to emitter, which can be passed on to other circuitry. And uh, so if you want 5 volts, that's why they got uh, Zener diode here uh, with uh, 0.6 volts higher than uh, 5 volts, so that you can drop 0.6 volts and still have 5 volts going to other circuitry. Now again, I mentioned you can like power a load um, very very small load with this but usually this is just a signal and you might send it to a comparator or something in this case um, you want the comparator to look at some other circuitry and when it gets either above or below the voltage of the Zener diode right there the output then it will respond um, so that's how this goes for reference voltages and uh, if you don't if you haven't seen those circuits before um, you know, look for circuits with Zener diodes and just realize they're setting a voltage, probably not to limit the power to a load, but so other circuitry can look at that voltage and have uh, changing voltages elsewhere. And uh, the output uh, changes, whether it's higher or lower in a certain way. And uh, yeah, so as I said before, Zener diode is a specially made diode to conduct well reverse bias. Some diodes are. Um, don't assume that they are though. Usually there's a breakdown voltage where a you know, like a rectifier diode will start conducting and that's bad for the diode. So now if these aren't uh, pre-packaged with their labels on them and I even had some where the uh, value was wrong but you can see up on top there's C5 hopefully. Usually you put the loop closer to your eye and then uh, kind of move the component uh, closer and farther as you can see there. But uh, there you can see C5 and uh, so on uh, the other side, we got, uh, it's going to be upside down now, but uh, V1 right there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but um, this was a 5.1 and uh, this is a 5.6. That's how you can read it if uh, you don't know for sure if you have the right value. 
So now I got the power supply there. We're gonna measure the uh, voltage and uh, this meter I just have to set it to V. If there's numbers on there, you set it to a number voltage higher than what you're gonna measure. This is auto ranging. I don't have to remove the red probe for anything other than high current with this particular meter. Um, other meters you may. And uh, so yeah, we'll look, uh, we should see about seven volts approximately at the uh, power supply right there. And then we're gonna look at the Zener voltage of our 5.6 volts in our dial. And there you can see it's uh, pretty much 5.6 right there, as we expect. Now we're gonna get a lot more current going through. There you can see as I raise uh, the voltage, we're getting you know about one more milliamp of current approximately going through. Makes sense because we have a 1000 ohm resistor right there. For every volt you put across it, one milliamp of current is gonna go uh, through it. So we got you know uh, at least six times, or probably almost six times the amount of current flowing through it now and there you can see that uh, we got uh, pretty much spot on 5.6 volts so if you really want to get close to 5.6 volts it looks like you want to set uh, probably uh, you know somewhere around six milliamps of current through it five six probably um, to get uh, really close but again it didn't drift terribly far now since this is uh, blocking five volts 5.6 actually um, and we got that 1000 ohm resistor I can probably go up to uh, uh, 15 should still be safe um, because we only have, what do we have here? I think you can get 12 volts across the uh, resistor there safely. And uh, so we got nine. So yeah, that's plenty, keep it cool. And there you can see, we went up a bit. It changed slightly, it does uh, change a little bit. That's the way uh, generally semiconductors go. Uh, they have a certain voltage where they start uh, like conducting, but um, as you raise the voltage, it will shift a tiny bit, but usually not uh, terribly bad. Um, some more than others. But uh, yeah, that is about it. I'm gonna set this back, turn the meter off. Always turn the meter off when you're done. This one does auto shut off after a while. It will start beeping first. Um, but uh, in case, shut off the meter. And also if you're measuring current, get it off of measuring current if there's like a power button um, because if you try to measure voltage when current set, you'll get too much current that could damage the meter if you thought it was set to voltage. So in any case, uh, pretty uh, simple topic. I covered a little more uh, than normal talking about uh, the uh, meter. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you uh, in the next video.